I wasn't going to film this job because it's it's not that exciting. Um, I'm just replacing the front brake hoses and changing the brake fluid on my MGB. Uh, it's a little bit more modern than the Riley or the Austin, of course. Get in and see it. Um, this is the brake hose here. They always seem a bit short. Um, I think the very original ones were actually an inch or so longer. So at full lock, these always seem a bit stretched to me, but given you're not at full lock that often, I don't think it's that big a problem. So I've changed the hoses, but I haven't re-bled the brakes yet. While I was under here, I also um, greased all the swivel axle and bits and pieces like that. Uh, it always seems I, li I like to, when I re-grease things, I like to pump the grease through until I see it coming out clean. But of course, it always seems to come out on the side you can't see. So you're pumping away and you're wondering, where's the grease going? And then you look on the other side and there's a massive blob of grease there. So it can't hurt. As, as long as it's clean grease in there, I'm not too worried. Um, I'm actually running lowered springs on the front here. So when it's actually on the ground, I get a little bit of negative camber on these on these bottom suspension arms which people keep saying to me oh you're going to get a lot of bump steer and, and problems with that but I've never had problems but it could just be because I never push the car that hard I'm not a race driver um, I just drive it relatively quickly but I'm not fast or anything so I'm not racing it around um, so I've changed the hoses like I say I'll, I'll bleed all the brakes but the reason I changed them is these are the old hoses. They're not original original because I restored the car about 10 years ago. Um, it's only in that time it's only done 23,000 kilometers. So I barely run in. Uh, the annoying thing is on these older cars in New Zealand we still have to do a warrant of fitness which is like the, the British old MOT test. And for older cars, you have to do it every six months, which is a pain in the neck for a low mileage car. Because I've barely done anything in it, um, usually every six months. So the last check, the next one's due in March, but I thought I'd better get it out of the way before moving. And the guy said to me, oh, he was a bit concerned about the front brake hoses because they were cracking. So I bought new hoses. Um, I got them from a, a well-known MG part supplier. You, I, I think I probably could have got them cheaper, but I wanted to get them from someone who I know knows what they're doing and will be supplying the right parts, not some cheap knockoff. So I've got the new hoses, and I'm looking at these old ones, and I can't see any signs of cracks in them at all. Granted, I'm not a mechanic, so I'm not sure what I'm looking for. Um, the guy who told me this said, you know, he worked on, on MGs and he worked for one of the, the well-known MG mechanics and he's raced them before so he knows all about them. And he said, oh yeah, there was, there was cracking in the ends of the brake hoses. So I should get them replaced by the, before the next warrant. But I, I honestly can't see what he's talking about unless he means those really fine little cracks there. Is that one there? I think that's not a crack. Uh, I don't know. So I'm going to try and get the warrant done in the next few weeks probably before we move. So I'm going to take these along and get them to show me where they're cracked. Um, I'm sure there are cars with much, much worse than that. Uh, they're definitely not leaking or, or anything along those lines. Uh, it's also interesting that these hoses, the original ones I put on there, have the spring to protect them. Whereas the the new ones don't seem to have that. Apparently that's normal. Ooh, I'm about to lose my light. Um, since we're under here, it's, it's sort of interesting to compare the suspension on the the Riley or the Austin with the somewhat more modern MGB. So on the 
MGB, the top arm of the suspension, is actually the shock absorber. So this thing here is a lever arm damper. And um, as you can see, the, the arms on the damper are the top arm of the suspension. And then at the bottom it's just kind of two arms with a triangular plate going back and the, the coil spring in the middle. So I'm going to put the car down again, I think, and refill the brake fluid. And I'm going to have to re-bleed every brake, um, starting furthest away from the master cylinder, I believe, and then you work your way forward to the closest one to get all the air out. Luckily, I've got one of those one-man bleeding kits. Um, it took me ages to find it. I couldn't remember where I'd put it. But since I'm doing a massive garage cleanup anyway, I, I hunted around till I found it. Um, I've just been, it, it kind of looks a mess, but I've been slowly putting things into other things so that when it comes to actually move everything, it's not going to be too, too big a deal, I hope. Well, that turned out to be successful. So all the brakes have bleared and the car's back to normal now. Brakes don't feel any different to me. Um, they seem just as good as they were before. The, the little brake bleeder I was using so I could do it myself is just a little power built one. Bleedomatic. Um, it's very simple, it's just a little bottle. There's a tube in the lid that goes down into the fluid and there's a little air hole on the top. Um, so you just pump it through until, until there's no more air in the lines. It's quite simple. I did have to, you can't see it very well, um, the bleeders are different sizes on the front and rear, so at the rear I was just able to use the black hose over the, the bleed nipple, at the front I had to cut a piece of um, plastic tube, stuck the, the end of the black tube into it and then that would fit over the, the nipples on the front. And so I still can't figure out where these hoses are supposedly cracked. Um, you know, even if you bend them over, I, I'm not seeing anything anything wrong with them at all. So yeah. Like I say, when I go to get the warrant, I'll take these in and I'll say to them, well, you said these were cracked last time and I needed to replace them, so I've done that. Can you uh, please show me where the cracks are so I know what to look out for next time? interesting to see what they say. This is the the old brake fluid. Uh, it's pretty grubby. To be fair this container wasn't clean before I started so there was a lot of gunk in the bottom of the box. Um, but it definitely looked cleaner uh, when I was pumping it through. So when I was pumping it through I just made sure that clean fluid was coming out in the, in the little bottle and not that brown manky stuff. Not sure what you're supposed to do with old brake fluid, so won't make a good cocktail. You can't tip it down the drain, of course. Um, I'm just going to put it back in the bottle, the old bottle, label it as used so I know, and next time I go to the tip, which we'll be doing shortly because we have to throw out a lot of stuff before I move, um, I'll take it up there with some old oil and stuff and see if they take it. I'm pretty sure they do. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure what, what us sort of average people are supposed to do to get rid of this stuff. And just so there is some real car content in this little film, since I had the end of the torque tube off, I put it in the little blasting cabinet and gave it a good, good blast just to get all the rust and the gunk and stuff off it. And it's come up really well. I did have to repair, well, not really repair, we're not going to be able to see down inside there. Uh, maybe we can. Something to point with. Just in here. Um, I missed once when I was bashing the, the tube out and hit the edge there. And this piece is threaded. Not sure you can see it. But that's where the carrier for the, um, the diff pinion gear screws in and out and that's how you you make one of the adjustments by screwing that in and out and then it locks in place so i just got a, a dremel it was only the first thread really that was bashed over 
So I got a Dremel and I just sort of ground that little bit away. It's plenty of thread there, so that's not going to cause a problem. And I made sure that the the pinion carrier will screw into there. Um, I don't have it handy. I've put it away somewhere. The side to side is set. Uh, the differential has metal carriers that hold the bearings that it fits into and those carriers are threaded as well and they screw into these so when you take these end caps off you have to make sure you don't muddle them up uh, of course I did but it turns out it wasn't too hard to figure out which way they went back on they'll only go one particular way so I imagine the way they do this is they they bolt the pieces all together and then they cut the threads and then take them apart of course so I just made sure the threads on these were good as well and that the carriers will screw into those fully in and out so the threads are all fine uh, so I know that'll all go back together when the time comes to actually assemble the diff but of course I can't do that until I've had the the tube shortened um, since it was all apart I also sandblasted the the um, torque tube end and the brake carrier mechanism uh, this is actually quite interesting right down so there's a bronze bush in here for the pivot there's a shaft that goes through here which is the one that all the um, the pedals work off um, not the pedals the the linkage that goes fo uh, forward to the brake pedal comes off there and up the top here is where the handbrake goes through and there's this kind of well in here I'm actually missing the plate that goes on top but I think that's just a simple flat steel plate there's a threaded boss there which I believe takes a stud maybe a nut a, a bolt I'm not sure but there's a little hole there and the idea is when this is all on the torque tube uh, basically it goes that way up this is supposed to be filled with oil and you can see there's a little hole there so oil drops down through that hole uh, that's supposed to do two things one it's supposed to um, oil the bearing that goes in the end here so there's a bearing that comes in the end here that the drive shaft rotates in and I guess it's also to oil this this torque tube joint and the interesting thing is this casting is hollow inside here there's actually a hole that goes all the way up through into there and that was completely full of old grease grease and oil so I'm not sure if that means oil is supposed to drip down from the top there round all this through into the bottom of the casing and then come out down into here um, I'm not really certain how that's supposed to work but I should check the shaft that goes through here and see if there's actually a hole in it that's supposed to line up with that oil way I don't think there is so yeah that's that's interesting um, I think I will probably wire this back on again now so that I remember not to um, take it off the the tube could use another wire brushing, I think, as well, but it might be a job for a different day. This is the rod that goes through the bottom of the the mounting, the, the brake mechanism mounting on the rear of the torque tube. So this ends up sort of down here. There is a hole there, and the end is threaded, and you can fit a grease nipple into that. But there's no hole in the middle, and that the shaft's only hollow down to that little side hole so it's not hollow in the middle which is why it's quite heavy so the pedal shaft is similar um, it's hollow it's got these holes for lubrication and there's a um, you can fit a grease nipple on the end but I've also seen pictures of cars where instead of the grease nipple there's actually a, a bar that goes from here to here there'll have to be a hole in the in the chassis rail for it to go through um, so I'm not sure what's original I'll have to check all my pictures but I'm, I'm sure I've seen it where there's a there's a sort of linkage that goes between the two 
and then there's a grease nipple on the end of that. And I'm assuming that is to stiffen all this up because as you can imagine this shaft it goes right through the gearbox it's bushed all the way through but maybe that that linkage between them just um, makes things a bit stronger a bit stiffer because if you imagine this shaft here has got all the pedal force on it uh, yeah I'm not sure I'll have to look up exactly how that works <laughs>